get started. Thank you very much. Andrea, would you like to call to order? Thank you. Um, has everybody had a chance to look at the minutes from our April 6th meeting? Yes. Motion Any? to approve. Second. Thank you. Any? <coughs> Are we okay saying everybody say okay? All right. John, you okay with the minutes? Yes. Oh, yeah. All right. Me too. Thank you. And no public comments. Um, old business, transportation planning organization, advisory committee, Samantha. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. For the record, morning. my name is Samantha Bergeron, economic development coordinator for the city of Edgewater. Um, so I did some follow up after our last meeting, uh, spoke to Pam Blankenship with uh, the TPO and let her know of kind of our quandary that we're in for the Citizens Advisory Committee. And she said what we could do is that we could appoint a person and one alternate, but that they didn't have the capability really to kind of keep up with five people. Um, so you have some options. It has to, she told me it has to be a citizen. Typically the representative has come from this advisory board but, um, and I haven't been able to talk to city manager about it yet, but um, I'm thinking that if no one from this board can or has the time and or two people with the alternate, that we could ask either someone from the planning and zoning um, advisory board or the city council could appoint someone. <coughs> so I was kind of kind of open that up for a discussion among you all and see what what your so, feelings were, what your, I know everyone's time commitment is crazy these days. So just a refresher of the number of meetings, I think you said it was eight per year? I think so. And the, the time day? Is it the third Tuesday of the month? Third Tuesday of the month, I do believe, and they are from one to three. And they're located in Daytona? Mm-hmm. Right there at the I-95 interchange on International Speedway Boulevard. Pull in like you're going to go to Michael's or Total Wine. And it's on the left. And it's it's ironic that we actually had a call this past few weeks from a lady who is on another city. She's on that committee. And one of the things she was talking to us was about trails and sidewalks and things like that and getting those things on the priority for the TPO list. And because Edgewater does not have a representative on that citizen advisory committee, you know, we don't have a, you got to have a, a seat at the table to be able to get on those priority lists and things and vote on it so that those items go to the board for the board to vote on. And I believe actually on the board right now is our councilwoman, Christine Power. Mm -hmm. she She's sits been on, on there for a while. Yeah. And has done a good job. Yeah. So um, it's really important to have a another person on that citizen advisory board. And when do, are they looking for the nominations from, like right now, right? Pretty much. I mean, it's <laughs> a while yeah, ago. Of course. A while ago. Because <laughs> since Mr. Claso left, we haven't had a representative on that committee. So that's been, what, a year? Well, has expressed any interest from this board? I know, as you say, Samantha, I mean, that kind of cuts into the whole chunk of the day, right? One to three plus a drive to Daytona mm -hmm. and back. That's the afternoon. Yeah. And it is 10. Looks like they do not meet in July and December. So 10 meetings per year. Maybe I start with the alternate. Is anybody interested in being an alternate? I would be interested in doing it. Here's my issue. Our board meetings are Tuesday, Wednesday, third Tuesday, Wednesdays of the month. And we do a Zoom every other one, and then they come down here every other one. We go from 12 to 6 on Tuesday, and then 8 to 12 on Wednesday. So it's just just a bad time. And who did you say, Samantha, might have some interest? Is there anybody we presented to the Planning and Zoning? 
We haven't. I wanted to bring it to this advisory board first, um, but I can coordinate with the city manager and Darren, our development services director, and see if maybe another board member from another advisory board in the city. I mean, planning and zoning makes sense because it's, you know, they see everything that's coming through and coming up through the pike as far as development goes. It's good to have a balance. And it's good to have a balance. Yeah. Um, I will do it again. <laughs> Thank you, Bliss. My husband is not going to be happy with me. <laughs> <laughs> but that's only with the caveat that we have to have an alternate because I can tell you I'm going to be swamped. Yeah. Not available for all of them. Okay. And I'm hoping to take a vacation. Right. <laughs> Bliss, I'll be your alternate. We can share those. Yeah. I mean, I mean it's, it's a bit of a challenge. Like I said, it's a half day out of, I know it's only once a month, but still, there are a few other boards that are right. half days. Right. That, and it's 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 a learning curve. So if they send you a packet like this, do I have to study and pass the test? Can you ask Darren to help out with that packet? Because he gets the packet. See, the Citizens Advisory Board goes first. One to three, and then but we get out, and the IT or I don't know if they call them IT. Darren's group comes in, you know, the planners come in, and they have their meeting. So if you start now and being an alternate, if if he could just talk to her like, you know, prior to prior the board to. meeting, because she doesn't need to know everything. Mm -hmm. But it takes a while to figure out what what you need to know okay. and what you don't. Um, so I would be okay going to the first one with you. Can I do that and yeah. just be, I, a, yeah, I, you know, just listen? Is it a three-year appointment or is this yearly? <laughs> I don't think I can commit to three years. That's just it's the gospel three years, truth. But it is what it is. People come and go. Yeah. And they adjust. Okay. Yeah. At some yeah. point in the past years. Because I didn't think about that till now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will... I'll ask Darren, and I'm sure he'd be happy to. If he's he, really smart, and he can explain that stuff in layman's terms, you know, really well. He can do it short mm -hmm. and concise. Mm -hmm. It I would had just lots help. Lots of meetings with FDOT and others in the Whaler expansion. So some of the. Okay, so you're you're ahead a of the little, curve right there. A little, but I would come to the first meeting with you, Bliss, and maybe we just kind of map out so that if there's ten meetings, you do five, I'll do five, and. You have just, to be flexible. Yes, ma'am. You just never know. All right. But happy to, happy to, we will give it our best shot. Okay. How about that? Great. Thank you very much. That's wonderful. Anything else, Samantha? Um, not, un, not under that particular item. I'll just okay. hang out up here. You can <laughs> hang out. Um, new business board member applications? Yes. So we have some board applications that we have on hand that have been kind of sitting there for a little while and Andre was kind enough to call them and make sure that they were still interested. Um, and then I also, as uh, we talked about, I did reach out to Dr. Hernandez, a CEO at Advent Health, and ask him if maybe he would have someone from his team that he would appoint because typically, you know, in years past we've had a member of the hospital on this board. Um, and I had talked to Renee Andrews about it as well, and she thought that was probably something that he would be willing to do. I just haven't heard back from him yet. Um, so you can make a recommendation, or you can wait and see if you get any other additional applications. It's up to you guys what you, how you want to proceed. So I know with some of the um, changes in the new hospital and some of the things, it would be very good to have one of our largest employers in this general area. And obviously, the hospital serves Edgewater, mm -hmm. and they have an impact on the community. Um, I'm open to anybody's discussion. John, thoughts? There's three people. We have one position open? One position open. And then we also have the three of you that are up in July, and I thought we could kind of get ahead of that as well if, if anyone's interested in rolling, you know, updating their term, then just to let us know. Okay. And, um, and we Which three are up in July? Decision. I think it's um, Rebecca and Clarence and John, because you were fulfilling 
an unexpired term yep. when we brought you in. Any discussion on, do we know anything about the application? Yeah, they're in here. Okay. Yep, I didn't look through that, sorry. A note that two of the three people responded are still interested. I did not hear back from Mary or Doug, so. Okay. So the other two, yeah. You know, in the past, I've always um, liked to meet them, mm -hmm. you know. Um, See them at a meeting. Hear what they have to say. In other words, just to get to know them a little bit better than other just in an application. I mean, because it does, yeah. unless anybody here knows any of them. Right, you can you know. vouch or. Yeah. yeah. And can say, yes, they're, yeah. you know. Um, because. Yeah, and I. You know, when. Yeah. It's just we're in the heat of of running for political offices and stuff. And the first thing I ask people when I meet them is, do you attend the meetings? How can you run for an office if you aren't attending the meetings? Well, it also, you know, it'd be interesting to add on here, and I don't know if, oh, this one did. Oh, planning and zoning and economic. Just if they've ever served on a board yeah. before. But you I mean, know, that would be. I'd never served on a board before I got on here. Either. But then you got on here and served on ten. <laughs> so, I mean, there is public service is important, and I'm not sure people that aren't, as you say, blessed traveling through some of the circles and attending some of the meetings um, understand. So, okay. is your recommendation, Bliss, that we ask those that are interested to come to our next board we meeting? Can do, we can do that. We can proceed yeah. however you want to. I mean. That's just a suggestion. And that way, you know, you get to. And then, have we checked any references? We have not yet, no. So I think we need to check references, and I think we need to meet them. And so check the references before we invite them, because obvious, is that the, the recommendation, Bliss? Yes. Is that something you do, Andrea, or does somebody else in? The group check references. We can check with the city clerk and we'll proceed. I mean, it's just, does anybody here know any of these people? Nope. Okay. And I'm reading through some of this stuff and I'm like, well, one of these sounds like they'd be great for planning and zoning. Yeah. That was, uh, is that Amy's? Uh -huh. I'd have to go back and look at them again. And, you know, that would give us time to ask people in the community who we know if they know these people. I mean, I'm very pleased that, that we have three people who want to serve on a, on a city board. That's encouraging because, I mean, to find a volunteer these days is hard. Yeah, that was Amy's application. It's very hard to find somebody to volunteer. And are we operating under the assumption that the three that are coming up are all going to continue? That's the assumption. Because that might that's open the assumption. up. A, yeah. <laughs> so I'm fine. I think that's yeah. the hope. I don't know about Clarence. <laughs> How long has Clarence been on the board? Um, it's been a while, but I think as part of our educators in this community. Yeah, as part solid. of Daytona State yes, College, I think it's, it's a mutually beneficial yeah. relationship to have him on the advisory board because of our partnership. And I think he likes it. Yeah. yeah. yeah and he no. does a great job. Yeah. All right. So I think the recommendation is that we, for Amy and for Teresa, that we do their references background check. Okay. And then if both cleared, we ask them if they're willing to come to our next meeting in just a couple of minute presentation okay. on why they want to serve on okay. the board. And we can contact them about and ask them history. to come to June's meeting. <coughs> won't be here, but you can always... Um, Go back and watch the meeting. Yeah. yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, you know, before you come back, or if you have a comment or um, suggestion or recommendation, you can always just let me know, okay. and I can <coughs> uh, share with the board at the next meeting. 
So do we need a motion on that, or are we okay with that recommendation and just following? I think we're okay with that consensus. Okay. Good, thank you, everybody. Yeah, absolutely, thank you. Um, any reports, Samantha? Um, so just to follow up from last meeting, I did submit the budget that you all approved. I submitted that, and I have the meeting with the finance director and the city manager later this month. So I'll be able to report back to you in June um, if anything had to be cut and where and what and what the finance director and city manager will be presenting to the council when we start doing our budget workshops. I believe they start in the end of June. Um, so those are always very interesting meetings. <laughs> um, so that's going on and just we are um, unbelievably crazy busy. I don't know if you pay attention. I meant to bring that for you today. The quarterly report from development services of all the permitted projects right now of commercial and residential projects. It's I counted it up, and there's over 13,900 and some odd uh, permitted residences right now. And I mean, that does include what's west of 95, which is a longer range plan, but those are permitted. Permitted to begin? Yeah. 13,900 yes. in yes. Edgewater? Yes. Wow. Yes. Good grief. Yes. Wow. Is any of it affordable? <laughs> no. Well, it's, it's market, what they're calling market rate. So the market right now is about $350,000. That's basically the market. And that's what they're, it's not affordable as in workforce housing or low income, but some of them are townhouses, some of them are duplexes. Um, so there's a whole array of activity going on and there's construction everywhere you look. I don't know if you've noticed. Any of them um, for rent, you know, rentals? I don't know if they're, for. I think most of them are for sale to own. But we do have, I mean, we've had a lot of TRC meetings um, and even special meetings because our TRC meetings are way out, you know, a couple months out right now. Um, and so to accommodate people in their due diligence periods and things like that, we've been having a lot of special meetings. And um, it's just, it's all over the place with the development and the the money that's coming from outside of our area coming in to invest in our area in Edgewater specifically is unbelievable. It's it's staggering. The you know I've almost been here almost eight years, and this since COVID, it's the busiest I've been as far as economic development, just with sheer volume of real developers and real investors that are coming in that have the cash. They you know they have the cash to get going. So. We've got the 83 acres in Parktown is under contract. Um, that particular developer is looking to build a million square feet of spec buildings. So, I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable. It's, it's wonderful. It's that staggering. This is what we've been preparing for, for, you know, while during the recession, you know, Edgewater was getting all the ducks in a row with their land development code and um, making sure they have the capacity as far as the water and sewer plants and, you know, just making sure that they're ready for it. And it's really exciting times. Good well, point. even for Miss Bliss, I watched her write down 13,900 because yeah. I think that all of us were a little bit shocked. Yeah, yeah. It's, At least it's that a lot. Feels. It's a yeah, lot. That's, so, that's a and if you go onto the website and go under planning and zoning department and yeah. under quarterly reports right there on the side, the latest quarterly report, he does a great job, that team putting that's that amazing. report together. Um, and it's great to be able to give to real estate brokers or um, companies that are marketing their properties here that they own here in Edgewater for them to be able to give that because the historical data isn't quite there, but the future data of what we have permitted, that snapshot is very powerful. And it, it's coming at, a right, at the perfect time because um, employers in our area right here, they have employees that they're having to rent apartments mm -hmm. over garages and yep. everywhere else yep. so that they have a place to live. Let them live in their campers and everything yep. just to get them to come to work. But they haven't been able to bring their families yet. You know, it's, yeah. it's we need housing. We do. And we people are like, a no little, more. Yeah. We need it. We do. I think you bring up a great point, though, with an opportunity for rentals. 
Is there a strategy? And I don't know the answer. So there is. I mean, we and we every developer that we get the opportunity to get in front of and talk to is we talk to them about the need for rentals. Um, we have a local developer who's looking at 210 Mango. Um, we have a contract on it. He's waiting for that to close, but that would be apartments, um, which is a great location and the proximity to Parktown as far as for the um, Lineman College. It's a great, I mean, that's a, just a great connectivity right there. So um, every chance we get, I mean, it's obvious, it's, it's in our SEDS, it's in our Comprehensive right. Economic Development Strategic Plan for rentals and for the different variety Right. of inventory for housing, for workforce housing, for low-income housing, medium housing, and higher-end housing. I mean, it's in, it's in there. And every chance we get, we, we try to attract and we do talk to those developers that do that. We even have reached out to those developers that do that. Of course, it gets um, contentious sometimes when you talk to someone about a piece of property and then the neighbors they hear the words affordable housing and they, you know. They think low income. They're thinking low income, and that's not what affordable housing is these days. Affordable housing is what everyone else, the masses, can afford. Right. You know? It isn't a one bedroom apartment for 15 no, a it's month. No, not, it's <laughs> not like the projects or, you know, from yeah. what people are used to. And, you know. I was having this discussion with somebody else last week, and, um, you know, affordable, and they're like, eh. And um, somebody there said, why don't we change the word to attainable? Like we like need it. to. And it's all about semantics, right? So it's just attainable. using a different word to when you're talking about it. And then um, also, um, lately I've been hearing, I haven't had anybody myself, but I've been hearing of other, other real estate agents um, being approached by these big investors that want to come in and build homes for rent, a whole rental community, wondering if we had had any of those come our way. I haven't had any. Are they are you? over in Ormond. I haven't heard or any. Or up in Ormond, yeah. or over in Orlando. And I think it's just a matter of time before they come. Mm -hmm. What's the business plan for that? Because housing builds are very expensive. They build out, you know, however many, 200 or whatever the number is, and it is strictly for rent. But they don't sell them. They just rent them. Are these short-term rentals like Airbnbs? Long-term? Nope. Long they're, they're renting them at for least a year a, or more? At least a year. And But see, the rental market is so strong, say somebody can't fulfill it and, you know, they get evicted or what get a job somewhere else. One out, next one in. Mm -hmm. Because there's that big of a demand. It's a huge demand. Yeah, and, I, and like I said, they're doing it in Orlando. They've already started... Um, there's already an existing complex up in Ormond Beach. <coughs> it's, so yeah. it's just a matter of time. But that would be great. Mm -hmm. It would be. It would be a huge help. Although I don't know what rent is going for these days. Last I had, what, two years ago, it was $1,500 a month for a house in Florida Shores. But I think that that's gone way up. Way up. Well, see, and that's the issue. And these... Um, these uh, Rent to own places are making it more attainable, mm -hmm. yeah. but that's and that's the other problem for these workers is um, you know they're only making X for as you know you all they're only making X dollars an hour and they can't even afford the rent on an attainable or well a, even with the wage increase of fifteen dollars an hour with the cost of everything else the cost of food cost of fuel everything I don't I don't know how people live. Well, you know, all we've done is really move the needle. So, you right. know, when, and I don't I think John would agree, we rarely hire minimum wage unless there's, not minimum, but, you know, a $15 right. an hour person. The majority of people, we're having to really step up and get into the 16, 17, because we're competing with Targets and Walmarts right. and, you know, fast food. And what anybody with experience, they're in the $20. Wow. So one would mm -hmm. say, that's pretty good wages, but yeah. not when you're comparing nope. the cost of living today mm -hmm. and the cost of housing. Right. So all we've done is taken that block and expenses, of, wages have gone up, but expenses have gone up probably even more. Yeah, I think I get the sense people are overwhelmed. Exceeded, you know, exceeded what your the buying power. 
I mean, I'd hate to see us end up similar to Key West or some of, you know, our southern um, communities where literally they bus people to go in and out of workplaces because the housing is not attainable, whether that's, it's rent attainable or whether it's purchase attainable. That's already happening. It's already happening. It's already happening here in Ocala. We have people that have lived like on Beachside for, you know, multi-generations and can't afford to live over there anymore really hurting the service industry. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, with that, though, the other thing I'm hearing is because we're talking about all this, is the biggest need is like for skilled workers, is for them to have a garage so that they have their full-time job, then they have a garage where they can have their tools, they can do their after work, after hour work, their weekend hustle, that those side jobs. Mm -hmm in order to make ends meet, mm -hmm. and that those garages are really important. They don't want, and I've been told, no, don't don't keep preaching apartments. They don't want an apartment. Right. They need a home. So they they need a garage, or they these garage. these townhouses with a garage. Well, and of course, you know, in a lot of these HOAs, a lot of the developments you have coming in are, are HOAs, and they're very strict on their what they allow and what they don't allow. You can't have three cars parked out there while you're working. You on can't. Them. Yeah, you can't. You, you know, you can't have a boat, you can't have an RV, you can't have one of the toys in the garage, or, you know, out in the driveway, so, yeah, it's... Well, great discussion, everybody. Any more yeah. thoughts, Debbie, from your standpoint? No, I'm just done bringing everything to the table. That's where we're at right now. You hear it all at the restaurant, don't you? I do. And tough getting people that can work for that type of wage, right? It Even is. It's difficult. Um, I'm very fortunate got a good family staff, uh, but it's, it's difficult. Just keep going. I think all of us have been pushing mud uphill for the last couple of years. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty With much. our hands. <laughs> so. Um, so some other just developments that have happened is uh, the city hired an event special events coordinator. Her name is Brandy Matztech, and um, she's really great. She's getting her feet wet and trying to just kind of get a handle on everything that we've got coming up. And um, she just pulled together a really great Arbor Day event that we did last Friday. We um, got the Department of Forestry, uh, the Volusia County Forester involved, and they donated like 134 trees. And then Miami Corporation, their tree farm, they donated another 200 seedlings. Wow. And uh, when Jason with Parks and Rec, when he was going around and talking to the different um, nurseries about, you know, trees that we have a local another local nursery who said well if we're going to do this next year that they would donate a thousand trees wow. so that's a really great balance if you will with all the development that we do have and something really interesting that we learned we actually went and planted four trees at Edgewater Public in the morning and then we went and planted three trees at Indian River Elementary and then we planted seven trees at Whistle Stop Park right along 30th Street uh, right along behind the fence line and they were telling us that even though we do have all of this building going on and some residents complain about the clear cutting of the property before they you know, put the fill in, that the foresters actually would rather see that. That is the right way to do development uh, because you have to bring so much fill in and you're doing so much groundwork around the base of those older trees and those root systems are so far extended that you end up killing the tree in the long run. And he said, too, that he would rather see smaller trees put in to replace those as the new trees because it gives them time for their root system to really get established. And then you have a long-term healthy tree when you go in and put in an already a larger tree and they're in kind of a root ball that they only last, they only live about 10 years. So the smaller trees are better and clear cutting is the right way to do it. And so it was very interesting and um, to hear that from the foresters, you know, because they were all about trees. They were very intense <laughs> individuals. Um, but we learned a lot about trees and about the proper way to plant them, the proper way to trim, making sure that your blades are, um, you know, clean and that they're actually disinfected. So if you have an infected tree, you don't want to spread that to your other trees as you're trimming in your yard and... Um, yeah, it was just, it was a very educational experience working with the forester department. So, um, yeah, it was, it was good. It was really so good. How do we plant a thousand trees? 
How do we distribute? If next year you have a nursery that's planning on donating a thousand trees, we gave out. I think we only had a couple trees left over, and oh. just remember, we we kind of put that together in a very short amount of time. Right. So. In the state of Florida, their Arbor Day is in January, and then the national Arbor Day around Earth Day is in April. It's usually like that last Friday in April. So for next year, um, Brandy is thinking of, you know, starting a lot earlier and really getting the word out and doing a Saturday event. It would be a half-day event where you could have people that would actually, instead of being a drive through event where people just come and get their trees and go, that they're really staying and that they're really learning, we could uh, apply for a grant where you have Smokey the Bear there and all his swag, you know, Smokey the Bear pins and learn about forest dry fires and forestry and how to, they'll do classes and little uh, demonstrations on how to take care of your trees, how to plant trees properly so that they live longer. And it's a whole big program and deal. So do the um, schools take field trips for those days or we could ask them to put in their schedule you know, field trip for Well, I grades. think what we would do is so that we can have the kids involved is on Friday on that actual Arbor Day is that we would probably go to the schools again and do something like that and plant some more trees. And then on Saturday have, have them, you know, invite all the parents and everybody to come out. So a little bit more planning, you know, a little bit more time ahead of it that we could do to make a better job. So Great. It just, it's a nice balance where we have all this development and then we're also planting trees, so we're putting it back. Kind of neat. So it was it was a good. It was a really I remember good. as a kid. Um, I don't remember what grade I was in, but my teacher just happened to be doing all the Earth Day yep. stuff, and our everybody in our class got a tree, a seedling. Oh wow! Took it home, and planted it. Yeah, and that's be something we could easily do, you know, especially if we got a thousand trees. We could exactly. certainly divide them in half and you know deliver them to trees where we every every kid got to take home a tree and a little pamphlet on how to it and how to take care of it and yeah that's a great idea and you know I was old enough that I could plant there right you know what I mean right well they were very specific you know they brought soil and you had to dig the hole and how deep the hole had to be and you put the soil in there and then you kind of make sure you get the air bubbles out with the water and then planted the tree and then watered it again and got the air bubbles out and then you, they had mulch that they brought with them to put around the base of it to you know help hold the water and stuff so um, and we're actually going to help Edgewater Public. They don't have any irrigation working right now on their back field. So we put the trees near the playground because there's no shade near the playground. So uh, Johnny's this week working on our sprinkler system on the back soccer field so we make sure we water the trees for them so they'll Good live. So. Great. Yep. Sounds exciting. Yep. Obviously some challenges associated with all that growth. Especially yeah. when it comes to attainment. Well, I think housing. it's just that and just I'll perception, you know, and just yes. helping to educate our citizens more about, you know, this. these are all planned. This is all part of the plan that the city has a plan for this. This was the plan and is the plan. We're working the plan um, and that it is sustainable and that, you know, we we have the capacity to handle it. So, you know, it's, it's all about education. And then speaking about that, um, you know, going back a couple meetings, we I think you had said that um, we're going to start having vision meetings and town hall meetings or something about the new comprehensive economic development Yeah, strategy. for the strategic plan for the city. I don't have the information no. yet on when those will be, but I'll make, as soon as I have them, I'll send them out to you so that you can. And where are we going to be doing vision, you know? So we'll start out with the strategic plan mm -hmm. for the city um, and that and then from the information gathered from those public meetings, um, they'll put the strategic plan together, and then and then we'll work on the CRA plan as well as the um, SEDS. And I was just thinking we can from those incorporate initial the, your last comments into that public awareness mm -hmm. of this is a plan. Yep. All a plan. Yep. And Anything? Also, Oops, I'm sorry. I was just going to say if we could also when when we're doing that. Um, really work to um, educate people on CRAs. Mm -hmm. um, I put it in the budget for next year to do a mailer. I'm going to do a mailer um, to all of the parcels that are in the CRA district about the grants that are available and kind of what a CRA is and what they what it does. Um, but with the quarterly newsletter, that would be something that we could put a little blurb in there about just the basics of a CRA, what it is, what it does, why why we have it. So 
Well, I bring that up because um, I had some people here from out of town, and I took them to lunch up in New Smyrna on Canal Street. And they were standing there talking about how beautiful it was and this, that, and the other. And I was like, this is all CRA music. Mm -hmm. They're like, what's that? So I explained it. Oh, wow. We don't have that. I don't know if it's a Florida thing. I don't know. Is CRA just from Florida? No, it's, we had it in Georgia. Did you? Okay. I would think it would depend <coughs> on the community and what they're trying to do. You know, if you're talking about visitors and making things charming, I'm sure there's a lot more people that go after those forms of money and have it as part of their plan. Yeah. But yep. Good. Anything right. else? Good discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Um, board reports? <coughs> Anybody? So there was one point, Samantha, I just wanted to bring up the meeting in July. You started that discussion yes. early. So yes. um, since there's no board reports and well, you finished. Yes, ma'am. Um, since we don't have anybody here from the chamber, mm -hmm. um, just want to let you know the chamber's uh, working on a hobnob. Um, and so I think it's going to be um, August and October. Do you remember the dates? No. I don't either. I'll have them for you. Our, I think our committee meeting is Friday morning. Um, and it's my understanding we still have open seats. Yes. For Edgewater. So I think we have three that come are come up that are that their term is expired and they're coming up for re-election as District Three, District One, and the mayor seat. Okay. Um, anyway, that's the hobnobs coming up. Should be exciting if we have people to run. You know, talking about getting volunteers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, need, we need people. And then um, I was just going to let you know that um, SEV MTC, you know, Southeast Pollution Manufacturing and Technology Coalition, is working on a job fair, and that is going to be. Um, July 13th at the Brandon Center, and there'll be more to come on that. Do you have sponsorships from businesses? Not yet. I mean, this this has just come together. Would love some. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, but more to come on that. I'll give you a call. Mm -hmm. And um, what else? Oh, and um, we're working with. Um, Career source on that. So those are my reports. Great. Thank you, Gail. Anything else? I think Samantha, at the beginning, before we had everybody here, was just generally talking. We typically cancel July's meeting um, because it tends to be around the 4th for the holiday week. A lot of people plan their vacations then. So is there a recommendation? Or review from anybody that we just move on past July. I think that's a good idea. I second. Okay. Any other discussion? Vote on that. Everybody, aye. 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 Okay. Any nays? What a July free doesn't bother anybody, does it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Um, any other business? Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'll get the dates for the hobnob. I'll send them out. five years old this year. You know, I think it was a, a Wilson brother way back in the day. Remember how popular they were? Yes, I do. But they were made so well, and... I remember thinking, I've arrived to have a lovely evening. And I've gotten another one since then and hate them. Well, they do play from afar. They do, and they're not, I mean, this one's obviously been through rain and mm -hmm. mud and snow. And Thanks, Debbie. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you. Nice job on, I will. nice job on Sue's board. Oh, it wasn't me that made that. Oh, it was okay. another girl, Linda made that.